Hello there guys, welcome to one of my videos. On this video tonight, there's a few things to negotiate about. <clears throat> so, I am going to be giving you the latest news regarding Jack Grealish. Then I'm going to be talking with you a bit more about Paul Popper. Then I'm going to speak with you a bit about Oli Gunnar Solskjaer. So anyway, let's start with the news on Jack Grealish. So, according to recent reports, Jack Grealish is set to hold Crumbs Talks with Aston Villa's chief, chief executive, Christian Perslow, on his return from his holiday and, of course, regarding his future. Now, I think there's still a possibility chance that Jack Grealish could come to Manchester United. Obviously, Villa have already revealed their asking price. They do want around £80 million for the player. But my own perception on that is I think £80 million is far too much for Jack Grealish. I also believe that you know Grealish could stay at Aston Villa for another season. Because don't forget, Aston Villa did avoid relegation. If Aston Villa would have got relegated, then I would have fully assured he would have left them. But don't forget, you know, we've been in for Grealish for quite some time and, you know, he has been one of our priority targets for quite a while. I would take Grealish at Manchester United and the main explanations why I take him at the football club is because he's well proven in the Premier League. His stats throughout the course of the season have been very, very good. Um, also, his versatility is very, very good. Up until this point... Jack Grealish has spent the entirety of his career with Aston Villa. He has been a Villa player since the age of six, <clears throat> I think, and he has been in their senior squad since 2014. And Grealish has still got a contract with Aston Villa until 2023. <clears throat> now, it did recently say that Aston Villa had offered Jack Grealish a new contract he said they was willing to offer him around 100 grand a week and it said he would be signing a two-year contract. I think Grealish's current wages at the moment are around £70,000 a week. Don't forget, uh, back in March, Jack Grealish had that incident with his £80,000 Range Rover. Obviously, you know, I think he crashed it into like three parked cars and reflecting on that, uh, that put his move to Manchester United in doubt. <clears throat> I think also to also to um, he committed another another offence that weren't so long ago, and I think he had um, a car accident after lockdown. And that so I think he's actually you know, committed to offences as Grealish. Uh, Manchester City you know have been in for him before. Uh, Tottenham were close to getting him in the summer of 2018. But um, yeah, so he's set to hold uh, Crumbs Talks is Jack Grealish. So then a, de he, a decision will be made on his future. But Dean Smith, the Aston Villa boss, you know, he insists that Grealish will not be sold in this summer transfer window uh, because I don't think Villa have got any intentions of selling the player. And Grealish, I think, is only at the age of 24. So yeah, so that is the breaking news on him. Now, let's talk with you a bit more about Paul Pogba. So, reportedly, Paul Pogba is set to hold... Well, he's set to hold contact talk, contract talks with Man United after um, our Europa League campaign. Now, obviously, it came out from the mainstream media yesterday saying that Paul Pogba had posted a tweet on social media saying that there will be, big, there will be some big news... Um, announced today obviously he must mean regarding um, a new contract <clears throat> and I think he also put some eyes uh, emoji on it or something like that obviously you know, we need to get Paul Popper a new long term contract at the football club to end uh, the uncertainty over his future because like I said Paul Popper has had a long running transfer saga Obviously, you know, a couple of weeks before the season finished, a couple of weeks before the season finished, um, it said, you know, that Paul Pob was close to signing a five-year deal with Manchester United. 
And obviously, you know, you had Fabrizio Romano, who is a very reliable Italian journalist. I think he came out the other week and said that Paul Pogba wants to stay at the football club. And he also said that Pogba's happy. And he said that Man United will enter negotiations with his agent, Mini Raliola, over getting him a new contract at the football club. Now, as it stands at the moment, Pogba's just got under a year left on his Manchester United contract, but the club do have an option to extend it for a further year. Now, obviously, you know, as it stands at the moment, Pogba is one of our most ex is our most expensive signing because obviously, you know, we paid eight to nine million for him from Juventus back in 2016. Recently, Paul Pogba celebrated his four-year anniversary at the football club. Not only Paul Pogba is our most expensive signing, he's also one of the highest paid players at the club because he's on like 300 grand a week or is it just under 300 grand a week? You know. But I think now Paul Pogba wants to stay at Manchester United anyway. Um, it was totally contrast to... Uh, uh, it was totally contrast this time last year because last year Paul Pogba came out and said that he wanted to leave Manchester United and he even publicly admitted it. And he said, you know, he was seeking for a new challenge. Don't forget last year, Paul Pogba was relentlessly linked to a move to Real Madrid. There was also a lot of narratives about him possibly going back to Juventus. PSG, Barcelona and Inter Milan have also been in for him before. So he has been subjected to a hell of a lot of transfer speculation. Uh, Solskjaer did recently say as well that, you know, Paul Pogba will stay at the club and he will sign a new contract at Man United. You know, Solskjaer recently said that Paul Pogba's got to make up for his lost time. Because obviously for the vast majority of the Premier League season, you know, Paul Pogba was out with an ankle injury. And, he, you know, he was out with that injury for a while. But he has sustained quite a few injuries as a Manchester United player, as Pogba. But, you know, I think Solskjaer's got a lot of time for Pogba. Obviously, you know, he knows Pogba well anyway, because obviously, you know, he watched Paul Pogba grow and develop. Uh, Paul Pogba is now 27, so you can still, quite frankly, say he's in his prime and, you know, he has still got a lot of development in him. And I think it's very imperative that we keep him at the club because we'll find it very, very difficult uh, to obviously, you know, get a replacement of his calibre. So I'm glad, you know, that he's staying at Man United, you know. So far, Paul Pogba's won two trophies at the football club. And that was the Europa League and the the Europa League in the League Cup in his first season at Man United. <coughs> uh, but obviously, you know, he hasn't experienced winning the Premier League or the Champions League as yet. Uh, we did have Pogba when he was a lot younger as well, under the Alex Ferguson era. But obviously, you know, due to limited appearances, uh, we had to let him go. Don't forget, you know, we did let him go on a free transfer to Juventus and that. So, yeah, you know the ongoing situation with Pogba. I mentioned it on my recent video. I thought it was actually in contract talks, but it turns out now Pogba's expecting contract talks after the Europa League. But I think he's expected to sign this new contract anyway at the end of the season. I think it will be a four or a five-year deal, you know. So that is uh, the breaking news on him. And obviously, Pogba's agent, Mini Raliola, like I've mentioned before, we've been very, very critical of him since the turn of the year. Obviously, you know, reflecting on the comments he said, because he publicly criticised Solskjaer and Manchester United earlier on this year. But Mini Raliola, in the last couple of years, has been working on getting his client a transfer away from Man United completed in that. So, yeah, uh, that is uh, the breaking news on Pogba. Now, um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has come out and he has said that three semi-finals are not good enough for Manchester United. And he knows how important it is, you know, to get past, you know, Sevilla in the semi-final. Now, it is going to be a difficult game. <clears throat> Sevilla will definitely, you know, be a test for us. Obviously, you know, the last time we played Sevilla was back in the Champions League group, Champions League last 16 back in 2018. We did lose by two goals to one. And I think the first leg was nil-nil. Obviously, you know, Sevilla did beat Wolves yesterday by one goal to nil. So, obviously, you know, Sevilla are into the, uh, the semi-finals. But, you know, they are um, a very, very good team. And I think also to Sevilla's um, boss has come out and said that Man United are one, you know, one of the biggest clubs in the world. 
But yeah, you know, we have definitely now got to be on our game on Sunday against Sevilla. It is our second European semi-final since um, Alex Ferguson's retirement. And like I said, it is our third semi-final this season. I don't think Solskjaer is going to take any risk, risks on Sunday. I think he's going to go with our strongest 11. Because as, as you've noticed, you know, in some games, you know, when we haven't gone with our strongest team, we have really, really struggled. Uh, we only just got... Got, got past Copenhagen recently, you know, beat them 1-0 after extra time, you know, struggled in the game against Lask in the second leg, you know, didn't go with our strongest team, struggled in the FA Cup semi-final against Chelsea, didn't go with our best team, and struggled against Norwich in the FA Cup quarter-final, didn't go with our best team in that. I think Solskjaer in the game against Sevilla, though, will make some changes from our 1-0 win against Copenhagen and that. But I've always said to you now, I think the Europa League is a priority for Manchester United because obviously, you know, if we win the Europa League, it will be our first trophy under the Ole Gunnar Solskjaer era. It will be our first trophy in over three years, so it will end our trophy drought. And it will be our fourth trophy in total since Ferguson's retirement. And it will be uh, the second time we would have won the Europa League because don't forget we won the Europa League back in 2017 under Jose Mourinho and that. But we actually you know are the favourites to win the Europa League. But I've got to say, you know, regarding Solskjaer, I think so far this season he has ex exceeded expectations at Manchester United. Um, obviously, you know, got qualification for the Champions League. And I did say uh, the, the importance of how important Champions League was, you know, for our players, attracting players and for the financial structure. I think we got like an extra £70 million in revenue for getting qualification for the Champions League. Also, too, uh, we finished third. I thought that was also a fantastic achievement. And like I said, you know, we progressed to three semi-finals. And obviously, you know, earlier on in the season, you know, you wouldn't have expected Solskjaer to exceed expectations because earlier on in the season, we enjoyed our worst start ever to a Premier League season. And at that point, Solskjaer was close to getting sacked as Manchester United. And there was obviously no talks about Mauricio Pochettino coming in. And there was also talks of, you know, Masmiliano Allegri coming to the football club. But I'll give you the main explanations why Solskjaer did not get sat as Manchester United manager. You know. But like I said, you know, win the Europa League, it'll put more confidence into the team. But the big test for Solskjaer is next season. Because obviously, you know, next he knows next season that he will have bigger expectations to exceed at the football club. I think our expectations next season will be to challenge for the Premier League title because, like I've said to you, you know, we haven't won the Premier League since 2013. You know, the last time we won it was in Alex Ferguson's last season. Um, but, you know, we have got to spend money to compete with the likes of Manchester City and Liverpool. And like I've said to you know, there's big decisions that's got to be made in this summer transfer window of obviously, you know, what players we're going to recommend in and obviously, you know, what players we are going to get rid of. Uh, Solskjaer's already outlined his transfer plans. Um, he's instructed our board to go and get his preferred targets. You know, and Solskjaer, I think, has said he wants Manchester United to make at least three signings in this summer transfer window. Uh, because obviously Solskjaer does want to overhaul the Manchester United squad. Our transfer budget's being revealed. You know, we have got around £140 million to spend. Our transfer budget will increase because obviously, you know, we are gonna, going to sell players. And Solskjaer's identified the areas in the squad where he does want to strengthen up because, quite frankly, there's still deficiencies in the squad. Um, I'm still hopeful that Manchester United can sign Jadon Sancho in this summer transfer window. I'm not going to fully disregard Jadon Sancho coming to Manchester United, um, despite the fact that he's obviously you know, in Switzerland uh, with Borussia Dortmund. Uh, Borussia Dortmund uh, won their first pre-season game, was it today, by six goals to nil. But I still think there's there's a chance that Sancho could come in. 
Uh, don't forget uh, Borussia Dortmund Sporting Director Michael Zorg. He came out recently and said that Sancho will stay at Dortmund. And the decision is final. And he also revealed that Dortmund secretly extended Jadon Sancho's contract until 2023. Uh, don't forget, you know, Bushy Dortmund's CEO, uh, was it the last week, uh, denied that Man United were in advance talks to sign the player. But we have missed out on the deadline to sign Sancho because Dortmund said, you know, we had until Monday the 10th of August to get the player. I'm still very, very convinced, though, that Sancho does want to come to Manchester United. Obviously, you know, the other week it was looking very, very imminent that Sancho was going to be coming in. Because obviously, you know, Fabrizio Romano came out and said that, you know, negotiations between Manchester United and Borussia Dortmund are, are at an advanced stage. And Fabrizio Romano said that, you know, Sancho had agreed personal terms with Man United. And he said that Sancho is expected to sign a five year deal with the club worth around 340 grand a week. But like I said, you know, throughout the course of this Jadon Sancho transfer saga, it has been Borussia Dortmund's asking price that has been the stumbling block. Because Dortmund have said they want over £100 million and we are not determined to pay what they want. Dortmund's valuation is around £108 million and it said that Dortmund are looking for around £90 million up front. You know, we're only willing to pay around £60 or £70 million for Sancho up front. But I think for Sancho to come to Man United, he's probably got to put a transfer request in and force the move, like I mentioned on my video this morning. We have been looking at alternatives to Sancho, like I've already updated you on, because there is cheaper solutions than him out there. You know, we've been looking at Kinsley Coman from Bayern Munich. We've inquired about getting him on loan. You know, we've looked at Usain Dembele from Barcelona. You know, we've looked at Douglas Costa from Juventus. We've looked at Thiago Almeida. We've looked at Rabbi Matondo from Schalke before. So we have looked at um, quite a few alternatives to Sancho. But as you all know, Jaden Sancho is our number one priority target. You know. But I think the players that, you know, Man United are looking to get rid of in this summer transfer window. I think Pereira, he needs to go. Whether we're selling him or not, I do not know. There hasn't really been much talk about, you know, Pereira leaving the club. Pereira's found game time difficult since Bruno Fernandes got recommended in uh, in January. Um, Marcus Rojo, I want him to go. You know, has he come back to Man United now from his loan spell with Estudiantes? I know he was on loan with Estudiantes. I don't know how he did that because I didn't really watch him. You know, Rojo's enjoyed a good five and a half, six years at Man United. We did get him from Sport in Lisbon back in 2014, was it, for around £16 million or something like that. And Rojo has made 122 appearances for Man United in all competitions. I think his current contract does expire next year sometime. Um, I'm hopeful as well, you know, that we can get rid of Phil Jones. You know, Phil Jones has been at Man United since the Ferguson era. You know, Phil Jones has now enjoyed nine years at the club, so he's approached his 10th year at Manchester United. Obviously, Phil Jones is out with an injury at the moment. Um, Diego Delo, I also expect him to leave the football club because I don't think Diego Delo is good enough to represent Manchester United. Obviously, you know, we've got Diego Delo in Jose Mourinho's final transfer window. We paid around £19 million pounds in from Porto. And, you know, Diego Delo has got a contract of us till 2023. But as you all know, Delo doesn't get in the team enough. He only made one start in the Premier League this season. Made 11 appearances in all competitions. And he had back-to-back -back injuries earlier on in the season. But he's basically used there as a backup to Anwan Bissaka, isn't he? Um, Chris Smalling, you know, some United fans will say get rid of him. Some United fans will say keep him. Uh, Solskjaer did recently say that, you know, he, he did recently say that Chris Smalling has got a future with Manchester United. Um... And Solskjaer did reveal that he was in regular contact with Smalling whilst he was out on loan with Roma. Because he was on the loan with Roma. You know, Roma did pay two, they paid around £2.7 million to get him last summer on loan. I'm actually surprised that Roma didn't extend his loan, to be honest with you. But I think we've said now want around £23 million for Smalling. Roma's still looking to get him in Inter Milan, also want him. But Smalling's been a long-serving player at Man United. You know, he has enjoyed a good nine or ten years at the football club, as um, Chris Smalling, yeah. Um. 
one matter. I think he'll stay at Manchester United for next season. I know one matter doesn't get in the team lot now, but you know when he does, he does make a fantastic impact. Obviously, you know one matter, you know has enjoyed six years at Manchester United. He has made over 200 appearances for the club in all competitions. We did get one matter back in 2014 from Chelsea for just under 40 million pounds. You know. Um, Solskjaer's got to decide on what players he's going to loan out um, I've got an idea what players we're going to loan out I think it's looking very imminent that we're going to loan to Heath Chon out So obviously you know, he can get regular first team football Supposedly he's joining Werder Bremen on a two season loan It was only in March that to Heath Chon had signed a two year contract with Man United until 2022 but he doesn't get any team a lot. I think we could, you know, learn James Garner out. You know, I also expect us to loan Dylan Levitt out as, as well. Uh, there's a possibility chance that Man United could loan Daniel James out. So big decisions need to be made. Don't forget, like I've said to you before, Solskjaer has got a goalkeeping decision to make. Um, he's got a goalkeeping decision to make yeah and I think you know like I've said before Solskjaer needs to put Dean Henderson as number one for next season Solskjaer did recently say that Dean Henderson's not yet ready to become Man United's number one but I think he's, rel he's reliable enough now because Dean Henderson's enjoyed two successful loans with Sheffield United and he has got that experience behind him Dean Henderson has said you know he'll leave Manchester United if he isn't assured to be our number one for next season Dean Henson's current contract at Man United runs until 2022. He recently said that we've off we offered Dean Henderson a new deal worth around £60,000. Um, but um, yeah, and he does recently say that, you know, Chelsea have been interested in Dean Henderson because they're looking for the replacement for Kepa Aris at Belega. Uh, but Solskjaer did say, you know, prior to the game against Copenhagen that, you know, he's facing a dilemma with, you know, our. He's faced a dilemma with, you know, the goalkeepers. You know, he said it's going to be hard to keep the Gaia, Dean Henson and Sergio Romero all at the club for next season. Because if Dean Henson, you know, does stay at Man United, then Romero will become our third choice goalkeeper. So reflects on that, Romero could leave the club. You know, David De Gaia has been our number one for several years, but I just don't think, you know, he, 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 he can no longer be our number one. Don't get me wrong, De Gea's had a good career at Man United and I think he's had seven good years out of the nine years he's been at the club. But in the last couple of years, he has been a liability. And De Gea is approaching his 10th year at Manchester United. So definitely got a goalkeeping decision to make. You know, he really, really hasn't that. But um, I think the summer transfer window has been open now for over a week. And we've already seen some, you know, signings made. <coughs> Obviously, you know, Liverpool recently signed uh, to Sim. Uh, Kirst, if I pronounce his name right, for around £13 million. Pounds. I think they are close to getting Thiago from Bayern Munich as well. Uh, we've seen City make some good signings so far. You know, they got Ferran Torres recently from Valencia for around £27 million, was it? Um, they also got Nathan Ake from Bournemouth for around £40 or £41 million. Pounds. Arsenal, I think, have just recently got Willian on a free. Uh, Chelsea, you know, they signed Hakim Ziyech back in February. For around 37, 38 million. You know, they got Werner from RP Lesbig uh, for around 48 million pounds. So they spent around 89 million pounds on them players of Chelsea. You know, Chelsea are looking to get Havertz on the board. Um, they're also looking to get, you know, Ben Cheerwell on the board. You know. So, yeah, you know, signings um, have already, you know, been made in this summer transfer window and that. <laughs> But, you know, we've got to do good recruitment in this summer transfer window. But this summer transfer window is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's fourth transfer window as Manchester United manager. And I've got to say, um, I've definitely, you know, seen improvements under the Ole Gunnar Solskjaer era. Like I said, I think our recruitment's really, really improved. Um, obviously, you know, Solskjaer's made four permanent signings at the football club so far and spent just over £200 million. Pounds. I think, you know... Solskjaer's done well, you know, getting rid of a lot of the deadwood since he got recommended into the club. I also think, you know, we've extended a lot of players' contracts since Solskjaer came in, but he still faced a bit of a dilemma regarding the contracts because we have got around eight players' contracts that are due to expire next year. Or seven or eight, something like that. 
Um, he's also, you know, promoted the youth well throughout the course of the season. I definitely, you know, believe that there's players that have definitely improved under Solskjaer. I think Rashford's improved under him. Martial's improved under him. Um, you know, Greenwood's done very, very well this season under him. Uh, like I said, Fred and Matomwe have done well under him. Uh, Pogba, towards the end of the season, did very, very well. Uh, Matic has really, really improved under him. You know, Luke Shaw's improved under him. Um... And I just think, you know, the signs he's brought in, you know, have obviously, you know, done very, very well. Don't get me wrong, you know, there's still improvements needed at Manchester United. And, you know, I still think there's some players that have got to improve and there's some aspects of our game that have got to improve. I think it's probably Solskjaer's decision-making needs to improve a bit more. Uh, but, you know, we've seen an upturn in form since January because, you know, we are unbeaten in our last 14 Premier League games. And, you know, don't forget, you know, went on a 19-game unbeaten run in all competitions until Chelsea beating us in the FA Cup semi-final and that. So definitely seeing improvements. But Sol Solskjaer has been at Manchester United now over a year and a half. And I think he's been permanent Manchester United manager for around, is it 16 or 16 and a half months? Um, but, you know, obviously we've recently been replicating, you know, what we did when Solskjaer first came in as interim manager because when Solskjaer was the interim manager, we did really, really well. Um, obviously, you know, Solskjaer won his first eight games. Obviously, you know, won like 10 of his first, first 13 games in the league and then won 14 out of 19 in all competitions and reflects on that, you know, that was enough to give Ole Gunnar Solskjaer the job permanently. But like I said, you know, I was very, very critical of him earlier on in the season and so too were a lot of Manchester United fans. But, you know, he's definitely, you know, confounded his critics wrong. And Solskjaer has learned quite a lot um, since he got appointed in. You know, like I said, he has now got that managerial experience behind him because Man United is the third club in his managerial career. Because obviously, you know, before he was at us, he was at Mulder. You know, he did win a few Norwegian titles with Mulder. And also, too, before I was at Mulder, he was at Cardiff. He um, endured a very, very short tenure with Cardiff. But the main explanation why he got sacked from Cardiff is because he ended up getting them relegated. Don't forget, as well, he managed the Man United reserve team for a couple of years, Solskjaer. So, you know, he did watch some of this team at this day and age grow and develop and that. But I want Solskjaer's managerial tenure to work out because at the end of the day, he was a great player for the football club for 11 years. You know, he flourished under Alex Ferguson's guidance and that. And like I said, one of his most iconic, moment, iconic moments as a player was 1999, of course, when he did win the club, the treble, which is just over 20-odd years ago now. But yeah, the treble winning season, you know, one of the club's greatest achievements, definitely. But um, there you go. But I said, you know, even if Solskjaer weren't exceeding expectations uh, throughout the course of the season, you know, I still would have said, you know, give him another season at Man United because it is a transition period and it has been a transition period for a while. But, you know, in the last seven years, Man United have been playing catch-up. Obviously, you know, we've had different managers with different philosophies. You know, we have spent close to the billion pound range on players. You know, we've also got players on big contracts at the football club. But obviously, you know, we've had other, we've had other problems as well. You know, we've had a lot of problems with the club's ownership, the Glazers. You know, we've also had a lot of problems with Ed Woodward. You know, we've also had a lot of problems with the club's board and that. But there you go. And, you know, Solskjaer is our fourth permanent manager since the Ferguson era. Obviously, the three managers that have been sat since Ferguson was David Moyes. He enjoyed like eight and nine months at the club. Ferguson was at fault for ever recommending him Moyes in at that time anyway. Obviously, no, Louis van Gaal, he got sacked. He enjoyed two years at the club. We did win the FA Cup under him. And Jose Mourinho got sacked after two and a half years. You know, he did win the Europa League in the League Cup in his first season at Man United, did Mourinho. So, um, there you go. But like I've said to you before, we haven't dominated English football since the Ferguson era. Obviously, you know, Ferguson endured 26, 27 years at Manchester United and obviously endured 20-odd years of success. But let's put into the equation, you know, Ferguson didn't settle in straight away because he didn't win out in his first four years at the football club. And like I've said before, I think it's going to be hard for any manager to replicate Ferguson's legacy in general and his legacy at Man United. And I'm very... I'm very sceptical that anyone will last as long as Alex Ferguson did. 
Ferguson won a total of 38 major honours at Man United, including 13 Premier Leagues. You know, but um, there you go. Obviously, you no, know, on my videos that I did earlier on today, um, I give you the news regarding Kaladu Kulabali from Napoli, didn't I? Um, the stories coming from Gazetta de la Sport saying that we've put around the 70 million euro bidding for him. I give you the news on Gabriel Megales from Lille, you know, he's been another player on our agenda. He's a cheap solution because he is rated at like 20 million pounds. And, you know, I've, I've obviously, you know, kept you up to date of what's been going on with Jaden Sancho. So anyway, guys, that's everything to update you today. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribing. Subscribe as always and take care. God bless and I'll see you all again very, very soon.